Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. Wayne Pratt here. If you enjoy The Gateway, take the next step and support us by going to stlpublicradio.org and making a donation. It takes just a minute and will help keep this daily news podcast possible as well as all the in-depth news on our website and airwaves. Make a donation now at stlpublicradio.org slash donate. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Friday, March 27th. I'm Wayne Pratt. President Donald Trump has issued major disaster declarations for Missouri and Illinois. That gives the states access to additional funding to help with emergency measures to deal with the coronavirus outbreak. Both states are also seeking help from the National Guard. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker has called out 60 additional members. About 50 are based in East St. Louis, who will now work in medical warehouses in the central part of the state. In Missouri, officials are making plans with the National Guard and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for new buildings or converting existing structures to increase hospital capacity. St. Louis County is reporting a second death from COVID-19. The Department of Public Health says the woman was in her 80s and had a chronic medical condition. Four residents of a St. Louis nursing home have tested positive. Those who had contact with the patients have been isolated at Life Care Center near the intersection of Choteau Avenue and Grant Boulevard. That center is owned by the same company as a facility in Washington State where nearly 40 people have died of COVID-19. More than 42,000 people in Missouri applied for unemployment benefits last week. That is more than 10 times as many as the previous week. The filings come as more businesses are closing because of the coronavirus outbreak. That includes the Four Seasons Hotel in downtown St. Louis, which furloughed hundreds of employees this week. Here are the numbers. Missouri now has more than 500 positive test results. Nearly 145 are in St. Louis County, about 70 in St. Louis. There are four cases in the Rolla area. State health officials are reporting at least eight deaths in Missouri. Health officials in Illinois say there are more than 2,500 positive tests and around 25 deaths. There are nearly 30 COVID-19 cases in the Metro East and one in Adams County. In just a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Jacqueline Driscoll examines how Missouri and Illinois are taking different approaches to the outbreak. As we mentioned, businesses throughout Missouri and Illinois are closing in response to the coronavirus pandemic. As St. Louis Public Radio's Kay Petron reports, applications for unemployment benefits in Missouri are spiking as a result. More than 42,000 people made unemployment claims in Missouri last week. That's more than 10 times as many as applied for unemployment the week before. The state's Department of Labor and Industrial Relations is changing some regulations as a result. They want to help get benefits to people more quickly if they've been laid off because of the coronavirus outbreak. Those changes include relaxing job search requirements, waiving a week-long waiting period, and waiving some charges for employers. Department representatives say they are pulling staff from all offices to help manage the volume of applications. They have also prepared their online application system to handle more users. I'm Kay Petron, St. Louis Public Radio. The Four Seasons Hotel in downtown St. Louis has shut down and furloughed all employees. That is all due to the coronavirus outbreak. This decision affects nearly 300 people. Hotel officials say there are plans to bring the workers back, but they also warn that the furlough could be permanent. Grocery stores are still open in the region. Most are busy as shoppers stock up on food and medicine. As St. Louis Public Radio's Shayla Farzan reports, workers are constantly interacting with people, and that puts them at a higher risk of getting sick. Detanya Weaver has worked as a Schnucks pharmacy technician for two decades, and she says she's never seen anything like this. It has been literally a zoo. Weaver says they try to disinfect surfaces between customers, especially because some come in visibly sick. We're very concerned for our own safety, but we tend to try to put our patients before our own health. United Food and Commercial Workers Local 655 has asked Missouri Governor Mike Parson to classify all grocery and farm 
pharmacy workers as first responders during the pandemic. That would give them priority access to COVID-19 testing and wage reimbursement if they get sick. But Parsons said this week first responders like law enforcement are, quote, classified for a reason. I'm Shayla Farzan, St. Louis Public Radio. The outbreak has impacted efforts to encourage census participation. Shannon Anderson is a program manager at East St. Louis-based Teens Against Killing Everywhere. She says her organization's outreach efforts have changed. Less door knocking, less questionnaire assistance, um, because, you know, we have to be social distance. So it affects the amount of people that we can directly touch. Anderson says the organization is shifting to social media while postponing planned in-person events. The Census Bureau has extended the self-response window into August, and people can respond online even if they have not received a letter from the Census Bureau. They can go to my2020census.gov. The federal government is leading the national response to the coronavirus, but many states are developing their own plans. Illinois and Missouri are taking different approaches. St. Louis Public Radio's Jacqueline Driscoll examines how Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker and Missouri Governor Mike Parson differ in handling the health crisis. When it comes to COVID-19, Parson and Pritzker couldn't be more different. They're both holding daily press briefings, but Parson's tone tends to be less urgent. I don't think there is a doomsday for the state of Missouri or the United States or over the COVID-19. This is not something. This is like viruses we've dealt with before. While Pritzker has been more aggressive and transparent. In our worst case scenario projections, in two weeks, we would need over 28,000 additional non-ICU beds and over 9,400 additional ICU beds. That's untenable. Both Parson and Pritzker have declared a state of emergency. Pritzker made that call on March 6th when Illinois had 25 positive cases of the virus, while Parson declared the emergency on March 13th with four confirmed cases. Parson, a Republican and strong backer of President Donald Trump, has relied heavily on direction from the federal government. He says the president is doing all he can to take care of the American people. While Pritzker, a Democrat, has been quick to criticize Trump's response to the crisis. We have long since passed the moment when we thought we could count on the federal government to lead in the face of this unprecedented situation. When it comes to keeping residents safe, outside of his recent order limiting all gatherings to 10 or fewer people, Parson is preaching personal responsibility. But if the people of Missouri want to protect themselves and protect their families and their loved ones. It'll be through social distancing and using common sense and taking on personal responsibilities. Pritzker, on the other hand, has used his powers as governor to essentially put Illinois on a total lockdown. We will close all K-12 schools, public and private. I'm ordering all bars and restaurants in the state of Illinois to close to the public as we must enact an immediate stay-at-home order for the state of Illinois. Anita Mannion is an assistant professor of political science at the University of Missouri-St. Louis. She's noticed the stark contrasts of the two state leaders and says Pritzker is more about decisive action. Pritzker, you know, talks about the action and um, that they're doing everything in their power within the state and working with the federal government or you know, petitioning the federal government. Parson focuses more on recommended action of others. It's obvious to me that it is a literally more conservative approach that Parson is taking, but this emphasis on personal responsibility, like he'll make a recommendation or saying something about schools or bars and restaurants, but no actual implementation. He's pushed all of that to the local level. Chris Mooney is a political science professor with the University of Illinois in Chicago. He says these differences are reflective of the two-party system. The Republicans' inclination is to avoid government intervention, whereas the Democratic inclination tends to be to let the government jump in you know, right away and get the job done. Mooney says most of the states hit hardest first, like Illinois, were Democratic states, so that could play a role. But the philosophies of the two parties are still a factor, and he's not sure the recommendations of health experts align with a conservative approach. Under most conditions, under for most public policy, a little pause, a little 
you know, okay, let's wait and see what happens. That's not such a bad idea. In fact, it's a very good idea oftentimes. But this is not that kind of public problem. At this time, Illinois has more than 2,500 cases. Missouri has just more than 500. Despite the political differences between the governors, both say they're remaining transparent and trying to offer hope to citizens as the pandemic continues. In Jefferson City, I'm Jacqueline Driscoll, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. Before wrapping up, a big kudos to everybody in the newsroom this week. They have taken measures to deal with the coronavirus. A lot of them are working from their homes and taking backup recording measures to get people you need to hear from on the air and on this podcast. Just one heck of a job by everybody in the newsroom this week. I'm Wayne Pratt, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.